All right, this is Mrs. K here, and today we're going to talk about respiration. Previously, we learned how plants make their food. Um, take a look back at our photosynthesis video, and you'll remember that plants make their own food instead of eating food. Um, animals, however, have to eat their food. They don't get energy from the sun. You can't just lay out in the sun and get energy from that. If that were the case, we would have no more world hunger. Instead, animals ingest their food, and then they have to break apart that food to release energy. Now, there's a fancy word for breaking apart breaking apart your food to release energy, and that's respiration. So respiration is the process of breaking down your food. When you break those bonds in your food, when you break it apart, that releases energy. Now, um, remember that our fancy way of saying energy in science is ATP. ATP is the energy of cells. Um, our ingredients for respiration is our food. And in this case, we're going to say our food is sugar. Remember from our photosynthesis video that sugar is C6H12O6. So we take sugar and oxygen gas, or O2, we combine those, we break apart that uh, sugar, and we release energy. Remember, our energy is ATP. We also release carbon dioxide gas, so when you're breathing out, you're releasing carbon dioxide, and we also release some water as well. Um, so our inputs are glucose and oxygen, and our outputs, or our products, are energy, ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. Just like you had to know that photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast, you need to know that respiration happens in the mitochondrion. Uh, mitochondria for plural. So remember we said the mitochondria breaks down food to release energy? Well now you know the fancy word for that process is respiration. So respiration happens inside of this mitochondria. Okay, so if this is our mitochondria, remember you can recognize its structure because it has these squiggles. They kind of look like a bunch of squiggly M's all connected. Um, our mitochondria is going to take our sugar, our C6H12O6, and our oxygen gas. Those are our ingredients for respiration. And then we're going to break apart that sugar and release energy, or ATP. We're also going to release carbon dioxide gas and water. Now, we said that oxygen is one of the requirements for uh, respiration. Um, but you might wonder what happens if there's no oxygen, okay? Um, we have two new words. Aerobic means with oxygen, okay? If I say we're in an aerobic environment, that means an environment where there is oxygen present. Um, anaerobic means without oxygen. This prefix an means without. So anaerobic means without oxygen. So an anaerobic environment does not have much or any oxygen present. Um, fermentation is a way to get energy from food when there is no oxygen, so in anaerobic conditions. So fermentation is one way to continue to get energy from your food when there's no oxygen present. Now there's two types of fermentation. There's lactic acid fermentation and there's alcoholic fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation is what you experience when you're exercising really, really, really hard and your muscles begin to burn or if you're really, really sore after you've exercised because um, your muscles aren't getting quite enough oxygen to um, get enough energy to power those cells, those muscle cells, so it starts to do lactic acid fermentation, okay, and that produces lactic acid which begins to burn your muscles. Um, alcoholic fermentation um, is something that happens in yeast. Um, if you've ever heard of alcohol or people drinking alcohol, we use yeast to break down sugars and other um, materials, and not only do the yeast get energy from that sugar, but they also release um, alcohol as a byproduct. Um, one thing that's really important for you to know is that aerobic respiration, so using oxygen, aerobic respiration produces a lot more ATP than does fermentation. So fermentation doesn't produce nearly as much ATP as does aerobic respiration.